Alright troops, welcome to mission 9. Here's the official introduction of the Alto Angelo, paired with two Bianco Angelos. If you give these guys any time to set up, they'll do some combination attacks, so I want to dive into the action immediately. The Alto is the biggest threat, but only when he's got some allies backing him up, so taking out the fodder Biancos to focus on the big guy is the basic strategy. Sadly, going for busters on the Biancos is unsafe due to how fast the Alto can attack. So charge shots and exceeds are the main source of damage. Once the Alto Angelo is alone, things get much easier. Even though he recovers pretty quickly, I want to keep him stunned or knocked down as much as possible. Charge shots and devil trigger activation are the most consistent methods of this. Level 3 exceed moves also do this job as well, but if you can hit max acts with 100% consistency you're some kind of god gamer, so I can't rely on this. Like every other fight with Glad Eye in it, the second fight is trashy and annoying. While these swords are active, they completely dictate the pace, and coupled with Angelos flying around, things get very hectic very fast. Luckily, Mission 6 gets you intimately familiar with exactly how they work, so I have a pretty good grasp of when is and isn't safe to attack, assuming some Angelo doesn't come cruising in from off screen to ruin my day, which happened more than a couple of times across my attempts at this mission. I went with the coward strategy for this one. Hop around never staying still while getting charge shots off. Devil Trigger is extremely precious because even if you focused on building it in the first fight, you're still not going to have more than a few activations, so you're even low on your get out of jail free card. Once the swords are down, it's basically the same strategy as the first fight of this mission, except hopefully you manage to get some bonus damage on the Angelos via the explosion from charge shot or maybe even snuck in a buster on the swords. If you're particularly slow, Devil Trigger might have activated on the Biancos, but even if it did, it doesn't change things much. This fight was the real roadblock of this mission, and an all round, not very fun experience. Glad to see the back of it. Next up we've got some Scarecrows and Mega Scarecrows, basically just getting to play around and blow off some steam messing around with combos, and just generally doing whatever you want. Not much to say here, so I'll just let the action speak for itself. The frost battle can be deceptively tricky. The small environment means there's not much opportunity to isolate them and their attacks can easily hit most of the playing fields. Devil Trigger is a key tool for making it through their AoE attacks. My strategy was to try and keep them stacked as much as possible so my charge shots would hit them both, doing not only a lot of damage but keeping them both knocked down and stopping them from attacking. Buster is pretty good for this since you can throw them on top of each other. But doing one with bad timing is the easiest way to get hit, so you need to make sure you're completely safe before initiating it. The assaults are kind of a similar thing to the frosts. Keeping them stacked and knocked down is the easiest and safest way to play. 
This time the small arena is a benefit, because it means they'll never be far enough away to try and do their ranged attacks. So if you stay focused and aware, they have very little opportunity to do anything sneaky. It's important to kill the last two in close proximity. You really don't want an assault active at the same time as the upcoming blitz. Now here's where this cramped elevator really starts to hurt. The low ceiling makes playing in the air a whole lot more dangerous, and that's one of the best places to be against a blitz. You're going to have to stay light on your feet and get ready to dodge on reaction to it making a move. It's pretty easy to get jittery in this situation and jump when it's not actually attacking, but thankfully the couple of times I did it here didn't end up with me getting punished. Normally, once you knock the shell off a blitz, you can kill it before it gets it back by chaining together air busters. But this lift prevents that from happening, so you have to deal with at least a little bit of red blitz, which is not a fun prospect. It went pretty horribly for me here. He opted for teleports just as I was shooting multiple times, so I had to endure the onslaught for a little bit longer. Just gotta hold your focus and not mess up, which is often easier said than done against an enemy of this speed, but if you can do it, I believe in you. Things can go pretty badly against Agnes in ways that feel out of your control. During the first phase, his most common attack is the triple sword summon. These things are real assholes, primarily because DMC4's targeting system is basically raw sewage. If you can successfully target them, it's very easy to kill them all before they fully spawn. But like half the time the game will just lock you onto Agnes for no reason, even though you're holding the complete opposite direction, and it gets pretty frustrating. This happens to me with his second summon, but it actually works out pretty well. I got to throw the first sword for a little bit of extra damage, and the second one happened to be near as a charge shot detonated on the boss, and got taken out during the buster animation. It's really fortuitous. A fun but kind of irrelevant timing for a tiny bit of extra damage I found is that if while doing the buster you release charge shot at the peak of Nero's jump before the pile driver, you can launch 6 swords into him and still have enough time to charge a fresh level 3 shot by the time the animation is finished. Not really a big deal, but I like finding this sort of stuff. After the buster he goes into his second phase, and he can really screw you with RNG if he feels like it. He has multiple enemy summoning attacks, and his fireball moves can slow things down massively, but I'm pretty sure I got as close to as perfect as possible here. Once the second stun lands, it's completely over. Tons of damage from charge shots and exceed moves, then a buster to finish with maximum style. That was mission 9, thanks for watching, catch you guys later.